Good day everyone! So ngayon, meron tayong dalawang topic na i-discuss para sa art section of our module. So this pictures will signify or give you hint para magkaroon kayo ng ideas kung ano ba yung topic na i-discuss natin for this day. So again, dalawang form ng arts yung i-discuss natin for this day. So let's start with the first one. Unahin natin tong tatlong example na to. So kung mapapansin nyo, this kind of art use black and white colors. So ano ba yung art na nagamit lang ng black and white colors? Yun yung tinatawag nating op art. So what do we mean by op art? Kung kailan ba siya nagsimala at kung paano natin masasabi na yung isang image na yun ay op art. Lahat ba nang nagamit ng black and white op art na? So let's broaden yung idea ng op art. So, sabi sa definition, op art lies on optical illusion. Once we talk about optical illusion, it refers to the deceiving of image. So, kumbaga parang hindi makatotohanan yung image. Bakit hindi siya nagiging makatotohanan? Look at the example. Para siyang nagalaw or parang dinadala niya tayo sa ibang dimension. Something like that. So, ayun yung first characteristic ng op art or ayun yung pinaka-objective ng op art. Ang pinaka-objective niya is to produce illusion that fool the eyes of the viewer. Parang nililito niya tayo na nagalaw ba talaga yung image? Bakit ganun yung image? Parang hindi siya stable. So, ayun yung objective ng op art. Lituhin yung mga um, viewers nung art na yun. By the way, ang op art ay nagsimula noong 19th century. At ito ay may touch ng abstractionism. Pero hindi talaga siya katulad ng abstractionism. Meron lang siyang similarity. Pero uh, kasi ang abstractionism, hindi siya nagkakreate ng illusion. Meanwhile, ang op art, merong touch ng abstractionism, pero nagkakreate ng illusion. That is the difference between the two. Later on, makikita pa natin kung ano ba ang pinagkaiba ng abstractionism doon sa op art. But then ngayon, ayun muna yung pinaka-key term ng op art. It produce illusion doon sa viewers para lituhin yung mga viewers natin. So, of course, meron tayong different characteristics. So, aside from black and white colors, uh, meron pa tayong ibang checklist or meron tayong ibang categories para natin malaman na op art talaga yon. Kasi hindi lang naman natatapos yung op art doon sa black and white at optical illusion na napoproduce niya. Meron pa siyang iba't ibang categories. So, let's discuss yung mga categories para natin masabi na op art talaga yung isang image na yun. One of the category ng op art or characteristic is gumagamit sila ng geometric shapes. Sabi ko nga kanina, para siyang abstract. Kasi ang abstract, nagamit din siya ng geometrical shapes. Ang op art, nagamit din sila ng op, um, geometrical shapes. Magkapareha sila ng ginagamit na shapes. Pero definitely sa op art, mostly limited lang yung ginagamit nilang geometrical shapes. It kindly hanggang tatlo lang or dalawa or sometimes isa lang. Unlike sa abstractionism, mas madami silang ginagamit na geometrical shapes. So ano ba yung geometrical shapes? Pag sinabi nating geometrical shapes, ito yung mga shapes like rectangle, triangle, square, circle, so on and so forth. So, yung mga closed figure na tinatawag natin. So, those are the geometrical shapes na ginagamit ng op art. So, again, mas konti ang ginagamit na geometrical shapes ng op art compared sa abstract. Pero parehas silang nagamit ng geometrical shapes. Ayun yung pinagkaparehas nila. The second characteristic of op art, it use pattern. Kung mapapansin nyo doon sa mga images na nakita nyo kanina or binigay kong example, nauulit ng nauulit yung shapes, di ba? Connected kasi to sa geometrical shapes. Yung geometrical shapes, dapat meron siyang pattern. Pag sinabi nating pattern, it means hindi lang isang beses mo gagamitin yung shape. Paulit-ulit from right to left of your canvas, from 
top to bottom of your canvas. Ayun yung tinatawag nating pattern. Like sa abstract naman, hindi siya mostly nagamit ng pattern. Ayun yung pinagkaiba ng abstract at op art. Ang abstract, mostly shapes yung ginagamit niya. Ang op art, nagamit siya ng shapes and pattern. It means hindi lang dapat isang beses na uulit yung pattern, paulit-ulit. And syempre, pag sinabi nating pattern, it should be organized. Pag sinabing organized, dapat naka-arrange siya ng maayos. So, that is the form of pattern. And the last, the visual effect. Ito yung pinaka hint or pinaka jeans ng isang op art. Yung visual effect or yung tinatawag nating illusion na diniscuss natin kanina. So, definitely, because of the shapes and pattern, yung shapes and pattern na ginamit nyo, nagpo-produce siya ng visual effect. So, relative sila, connected silang tatlo. Kapag pinagsama-sama mo yung tatlong karakteristik na yon, yung shape, yung pattern, you can produce visual effect na pwedeng mag-lead sa op art na tinatawag. So, ayan yung visual effects na parang naihilo yung nating yan or parang sinasabi nung nating yan, bakit parang nagalaw yung image? Bakit parang hindi stable yung image? So, that is the visual effects. It gives the viewer a sense of motion. Yun yung visual effects. So, again, those are the characteristics of op art. So, it uses black and white colors. It uses geometrical shapes. It uses pattern, and of course, it use visual effects. So, ayun yung kinaibahan niya sa abstract. Ang abstract kasi walang visual effects or illusion, pero ang op art, meron siyang visual effects. So, bakit ba natin nakikita yung image na nagalaw? Or how does the op art work? So, actually, meron tayong dalawang part ng katawan natin na involve kung bakit ba parang nagalaw yung image ng op art. First is the eyes and the second is the brain. So, syempre, alam naman natin na ang brain is the one that control our action and the eyes is the one that send message to the brain. So, ganito yan. So, yung eyes natin, pag tinignan natin yung image natin ng op art, di ba minsan parang nagpapabalik-balik siya back and forth, back and forth. So, yung mata natin, hindi niya nakokontrol yung image because of the pattern na ginamit ng artist. So, ang tendency ng, katawa, ng mata natin is magpapabalik-balik yung tingin doon sa image. And because of that, ayun yung napeperceive ng brain. So, definitely, ang mapeperceive ng brain, para siyang nagalaw. Kasi nga, yung mata natin, pabalik-balik na nagalaw. So, that is the effect of eyes and brain dun sa op art. So, again, that is op art. Of course, meron tayong pinakakilalang artist in terms of our op art. And siya ay si Bridget Relay. So, Bridget Relay is one of the famous artists in op art at ang pinakakilala niyang artwork is yung fall na pininta niya during 1963. Yung fall, it used var, um, various kind of measurement ng curve lines. So, kung mapapansin niyo sa lower left corner of the slides, from malaking curve to maliit pababa. So, ayun yung kung makikita natin para siyang nagalaw na water. Pababa. So, that is the fall nung 1963 na pininta ni Bridget Pillay. So, hindi lang doon natatapos ang kanyang legacy. Meron pa siyang iba't ibang mga artworks like those example na nasa slides. So, ayan ang Bridget Pillay na pinakakilala sa op art. Let's continue our discussion with the second part of this video. So, tapos na tayo sa op art. So, for this moment, we're going to discuss the pop art. So, what is the difference of pop art and op art? So, from the word pop, it means popular, to be particular. So, actually, this was promulgated or 
lumaganap siya sa New York. Ang pop art mostly nag-enhance niyan ay ang USA to be particular. So there are different characteristic of pop art. Paano ba natin masasabi na pop art yun at hindi op art? So let's compare and contrast. But before anything else, let's have the history of pop art. Actually, the main purpose kung bakit meron tayong pop art ngayon is yung mga artists kasi before, they want to have inclusivity or yung bang they want to have equality in terms of art. Kasi before, di ba, they believe yung art is para lang sa mga mayayaman. Pupunta pa sa museum para lang makakita ng artworks, pupunta pa sa ex exhibition para lang maka-appreciate ng artwork or sa salon, so on and so forth. So therefore, sabi ng mga artists na yun, bakit mostly hindi equal yung pagtingin ng society in terms of art? Bakit puro laging mayayaman lang? Unfair ang art para sa mga may hirap. So nakaisip yung mga artists kung paano ba ibibring out yung art para sa mga commoners, para sa mga taong hindi maka-afford ng pambili ng artwork or pambili ng paintings. So yun yung naging challenge dun sa mga artists at dun nagsimula yung pop art. Because the artist wants to have inclusivity or pagkakapantay-pantay in terms of art. The artist use different kinds of characteristic than katulad ng nabanggit ko kanina. So let's have this one. The pop art started during 1950s or ayun yung pinaka-peak ng kanyang um, regime in terms of art. So, dito, ano ba yung kasabayan ng pop art? Kasabayan niya yung mga TV film advertisement. So, during that time, since patok na patok yung mga sikat na artista like Marilyn Monroe, yung mga sikat na artist and mga banda, so, yun yung naisip nalang gamitin ng mga artist para i-brought out yung art sa mga tao na hindi kaya mag-afford ng painting sa museum or sa exhibit. So therefore, ang ginawa nila, they use different icons na very common, very familiar dito sa pop art. So that is the history of pop art. Let's have the characteristic of pop art. So these are the characteristic of pop art. So, these are the characteristic of pop art na ibang-iba sa pop art. The subjects and canvas that they use in pop art are very common. So, it means pwede nating makita kahit saan lang. Like tin cans, lata, yan. So, magazines and signage. So, kumbaga, hindi katulad ng mga art works dati na kinakailangan mo pang bumili talaga ng canvas, ng painting, ng paintbrush, ng color, so on and so forth. Dito, pwede silang makabuo ng image based lang doon sa mga resources na pwede nilang makita sa mga paligid nila, which is very common sa society. The next characteristic of pop art, it uses recognizable images. Once we talk about recognizable images, it means mostly mabilis nating makilala. So ano ba yung mga image na mabilis nating makilala? Definitely artists, yung mga icons, yung mga actor, actress, so on and so forth. So during that time, one of the best example is Marilyn Monroe. During 1950s, ayun kasi yung kasagsagan ng kanyang career in terms of her singing industry. So, ang ginawa ng mga artists dito is hindi naman pinagkatuwaan, but then again, they imitate the image of Marilyn Monroe since kilala nga siya, mas madaming naka-appreciate and mas maraming naka-relate dun sa art. Kasi nga, mas maraming nakakakilala sa kanya. Kasi di ba kapag tayo kilala natin, nakaka-relate tayo doon sa mga artist na yon. So, ayun yung isang reason na ginawa or na ginamit ng mga artists para i-brought out yung art sa mga commoners, sa mga tao. Kasi nga, 
they want na yung art is for all, para sa lahat, hindi lang para sa mga mayayaman. So, that is recognizable images. And kung hindi man artist ang kanilang ginagamit, pwede din silang gumamit ng mga food. So, like label ng food, so on and so forth. Or pwede din silang gumamit ng mga common objects na very recognizable or pwede nilang magkilala agad-agad or makarelate yung tao. Kasi nga, nakakarelate sila because they use that one, they have that one, or they can relate into that one. So that is the strategy of pop art for them to brought out yung art sa lahat ng tao. The third characteristic that they use is vibrant colors. Once we talk about vibrant colors, those are the colors na matitingkad. Ito yung kinaibahan ng pop art sa op art. Ang op art kasi, di ba? Mostly, black and white lang ang ginagamit na colors. But definitely, in terms of pop art, they use vibrant colors or mostly yung primary colors. So, yun yung pinagkaiba nila. Kaya mas nakakaget ng attention. Kasi, very exage or sometimes hindi na makatotohanan yung colors na ginagamit nila. Pero, hindi nawawala yung real subjects nila. So, ayun yung kinaibahan in terms of the colors that used by pop art and pop art. And last, the pop art used irony and satire. Once we said irony or satire, it's like a joke, something like that. It's like an entertainment art. Sabi dito sa example or sa picture, I'm making a change in Iraq. So, therefore, yung word na Iraq, yung Q, pinalitan niya rin ng N. So, therefore, change na nga naman. Something like that. It's like practical jokes for everyone. So, ayun yung kinaibahan ng pop arts of art. Diba, ang of art, it produce um, illusion. Dito naman sa pop art, it produce entertainment or uh, irony and satire. So, dito, mostly practical jokes yung makikita natin dito sa pop art. And those are the two topics that I will discuss for this morning. So I hope you've learned a lot for this discussion. And if you have something, question, just comment down below. And please do subscribe for you to be updated into my channel. Thank you and have a nice day ahead.